Hello friends, today we're talking about pride. One of the worst things that can happen to an ongoing de-escalation is that someone lets their ego out of the box. It's extremely common because de-escalators are prone to the same issues as escalated people. We don't want to lose. This is a huge problem. If I had to pick one thing for everyone to learn to improve de-escalation for everybody, it would be that they learn to manage their pride. And you know what? I get it. I know that sinking feeling that starts to take hold in your stomach as the situation starts to leave your control because you had a plan, it was a good one, it was going to work, but the escalated person didn't respond how you thought they were going to, and now they're escalating again and the situation is slipping further and further from your control, so you need to get that control back. You start using short sentences, issuing commands, interrupting, your volume goes up just to get back to that place where you feel like you've got a good handle on what's going on. But look at what we've just done. We've escalated. And you can only de-escalate down to the level of the calmest person. So if we're giving orders, where's our escalated person at? They're at, no, you calm down. That's where they're at. It is not possible to control someone else's behavior. Can't be done. All we can do is create circumstances that incentivize the behavior that we want to see. But if you're under the impression that you need to control the situation, you're going to end up in this loop where you escalate to try and maintain that control and they push back and then you push back on them and now we're just going up. I see this behavior a lot in folks who are used to a rigid hierarchical system. The military. I, I see it in military people. And it makes sense in those situations because in, say, the army, everyone is part of the same hierarchy and everyone agrees on where they fall. It doesn't matter if they're a dumbass, they're your superior, and that's that. So folks leave that particular situation and go to one where things aren't as clear cut and try to exert that control and it doesn't work. Surprise. That's not to say that people who were never in the military don't try to exert a non-existent hierarchy. It's just easy to identify when it's someone who's been recently transplanted out of a hierarchical system. Anyway, there's two ways to manage this tendency in yourself and one way to manage it in others. And none of this is fun. To be clear, we are not talking about the escalated person here. Only the primary de-escalator, their backup, and any bystanders. In order to manage someone else's pride, it's simple, but it's not easy. That person needs to leave the situation. That's it. They gotta go. If it's someone who's there to support you when you de-escalate, then it is your responsibility to ask them to leave and to insist on it if necessary. If it's a bystander, then they need to move on and go lurk on someone else's drama. It's okay to be assertive or even outright blunt with people. The goal is to give the escalated person some breathing room. It's good for your rapport to be seen doing this as well. It is much, much harder to manage your own pride, and this is where we're going to get into the weeds a bit. To manage your own pride in the moment, you first need to be able to recognize that you are escalating. This is shockingly difficult to do, but part of being a good de-escalator is keeping your emotions on lock, so get used to it. Be keeping an eye out for those early feelings of hurt, anxiety, or fear, or anger. I suspect that everyone's internal experience of escalation is a bit different, so I can't give you anything truly prescriptive. The earliest signs of escalation are usually an increased heart rate, shallow breathing, and repetitive actions like fidgeting. But I don't know what you're going to notice first in yourself, so you'll have to pay attention to your own reactions in escalated situations. For me personally, I get literally hot under the collar and I stim. You'll have to figure out what your signs are for yourself. Once you've noticed that you're escalating, dissociate that feeling from your personhood. Or to put it another way, Q-tip. Quit taking it personal. It's not personal. It's not about you. An escalated person is looking out for themselves and you are collateral damage. Yes, that includes circumstances where the escalated person has tried to hurt you personally, either through insults and personal attacks or through physical attacks. Note, I am making the presumption that you're starting out de-escalating like a significant other who's upset because you don't communicate clearly and not like your mortal rival whose beef with you can only be resolved in a duel to the death. So put whatever escalated feelings you're experiencing, whether you're hurt or scared or angry, put those feelings in a box. Just put them all together in a box. Just do what you gotta do. Just get it together. You need to be able to handle the rest of the escalated situation rationally, which means your emotions need to stay out of it. And to be absolutely clear, anger is an emotion and it is just as detrimental to the de-escalation as is fear. An emotion that isn't a barrier to de-escalation is compassion. Is compassion an emotion? I, I don't know. But that one can stay. Everything else needs to go in the box. The second way to manage your own behavior can only happen outside the context of the escalated situation. 
Once you've successfully de-escalated and disengaged, or just disengaged, then you need to do a debrief. We talked about a debrief when we talked about time, and what I described there was a group debrief. I didn't talk much about how to debrief when it's just you. That was an oversight. Let's do that now. Note, you can do this kind of personal debrief alongside or after the group debrief as well. It's not necessary that you admit to your shortcomings in front of a group unless that's something you're into and they are also okay with that. So here's those debrief questions again, but let's apply them internally this time. First, what went well? Were you able to identify escalation in yourself, in the other person? Were you able to manage your feelings in order to stay productive? Were you able to successfully de-escalate the situation, particularly if you had to suppress some emotions of yours? Second, what could we do better? Now is when we need to open that box. You can't leave emotions in the box forever. They go bad if forgotten. We need to pull them out, and the debrief is the time to do it. Why did we have these emotions? What were the first signs of our escalation? Really take the time to look back on the situation and see if you can identify the first signs of escalation in yourself. It's harder than you think. Why did we start taking things personally? What can we do to prevent that escalation in ourselves in future situations? Finally, was there anything that was actively dangerous or harmful that happened, and how can we avoid that in future de-escalation situations? Did our emotions reach the point of external escalation? Did we yell, threaten, insult personally, issue commands, attempt to assert a hierarchy? Were we so wrapped up in ourselves that we missed signs of escalation in the other person? Spend time reflecting on this, serious time. Come back to it if you have to. As long as you are allowing your pride to be wounded, you cannot improve as a de-escalator. What do you think? Is there a place for pride in de-escalation? How do you manage your hurt feelings in an escalated situation? Have you let your pride get the better of you? How did that turn out? Put your stories, additions, or corrections in the comments. Be smart, stay safe, bye.